What to expect from the Police Academy. Hey guys, what's going on? I hope everybody's having a fantastic week so far. As I mentioned in the last video, I wanted to break this up into three segments. The first one was last week, and that was the interview process. This one is going to be about the academy itself, and then the next video will be about FTO. There are usually two types of people that join the police academy. It's either people that are sponsored by a department and are actually getting paid to go, and their costs are covered, or there's something called pre-service. Pre-service are the people that have basically put themselves to the academy, whether it be the GI Bill or some scholarship, somehow they are just out of pocket. They are paying for themselves to go through the academy. Depending on which academy you go to, you might be put in a hotel, you might stay on campus or base, and they might have dormitory type rooms. Luckily for us, we had it pretty easy. They put us up in a hotel room like three blocks away from the academy, which was at a college campus. So once the day was done, we got to go back to a hotel room and chill. Not all academies are like that though. If you go into a major metropolitan area, especially somewhere like San Diego, Los Angeles Sheriff's Office, there are dormitories. It's much more of a boot camp type of regimen than a relaxed environment. I say relaxed loosely. Relaxed environment like I had. So basically the day to day with the academy, the first day we got there, um, they had us run two miles. You run two miles your first day and you do push-ups and sit-ups and pull-ups as many as you can. And then from the second day on, we actually ran three miles a day and we did all the same stuff. So don't go into the police academy expecting them to get you into shape. You need to be in pretty good shape by the time you get there. So usually after PT is done, that's when you go back to your hotel room or you go back to your dorm room, you shower and uh, you go back to class. You, you start class that morning. Class usually starts around 8, 8.30, somewhere around there, and you're gonna go until 4.30 or 5 in the afternoon. So usually your first few weeks are going to be the most boring. And the reason why they do that, the first few weeks are really the hardest part of the academy. Uh, as far as curriculum is concerned, a lot of it is constitutional law. A lot of it is like your state's laws. For mine, it was Georgia law. Uh, you have things like criminal procedure when they're talking about, you know, uh, court testimony and things like that. Most people that fail the police academy usually fail within the first like three or four weeks of the academy because those are the hardest ones. They want to get the hard stuff out of the way because there's no sense in like straggling somebody along and then at the very like last three weeks of the academy you just throw all this hard shit at them. So like I said, the first few weeks of the academy are not going to be the most exciting. It's going to be a lot of law, a lot of just fundamental principles of law enforcement. So usually after the first few weeks of the academy, that is when you start getting to do the fun stuff. Usually first comes either firearms or what's called EVOC. EVOC is Emergency Vehicle Operations Course. That was a blast. Um, I don't know how they do it in other states, but for us in Georgia, uh, basically it was a three day class. Your first day was basically like classroom and they kind of show you the tracks and show you how everything works. The second day is when you get to practice everything you learned the first day. So you spend all day long driving in and out of cones and like hitting the skid pad, which I think was really fun. So basically for the skid pad, they would put one cone out on this like just flat level area. But keep in mind the concrete was like coated in water so as you're driving you have to drive straight at this cone the instructor who is sitting in the passenger seat has a little red button at the very last second when you're getting close to the cone he'll hit the button and he'll tell you either left or right and you have to maneuver around that cone without hitting it then you have the cone course which is pretty self-explanatory you're trying to maneuver around these cones you might have to back into a few spots and then you have to parallel park don't go into the academy thinking that you are going to come out as some driving expert your driving experience is just that. It comes with experience, it comes with time. You're not gonna come out of the academy as some highly trained defensive driver. That's not the way this works. And on a side note, let me let me throw that out there too, guys. Compare the police academy to building a house, okay? What's the first thing you have to do whenever you wanna build a house? You have to clear the trees out, right? You have to clear out the trees and the vegetation. That's all the academy is. The academy is not even building the foundation of the house. The academy is just clearing out the trees on a lot if you want to make a comparison to building a house. Most of what you learn as a cop is going to be through experience and it's going to be through advanced training classes that are taken after the academy, after you've already been on the road. The academy is just about the basics. Compare a baby's first little steps to Usain Bolt. Those little baby steps 
those are your that's your graduation from the academy i'm going to speed this up a little bit because i want to tell you guys a funny story so basically your day today is going to be pt in the morning it's going to be class all day long you're going to be watching powerpoint presentations and learning whatever you need to learn for the test the biggest thing to remember the enabling objectives at the beginning of those powerpoint presentations i would highly suggest you know those because usually the test comes from the enabling objective questions and if you don't know what i'm talking about the enabling objectives or the eos are usually it's a list of questions that are asked at the beginning when, of whatever presentation they're showing so usually they'll show these questions and they kind of want you to answer those throughout uh the presentation so make sure to write those down those those are really important everybody would get all stressed out because they didn't pay attention in class they were texting whoever as long as you pay attention in class you really shouldn't have to study a lot when you're back at your room or your dorm or whatever um, I can remember one night where I studied with the group and other than that I just paid attention in class and passed my test so that's really it guys like I said you have PT in the morning you have class all day you go back to your room you might study you eat um, don't make the mistake of drinking every night save the drinking for the weekend if you're of age of course we had a guy that was a military veteran came back from overseas joined the police academy and it was like tradition for him every thursday night while he studied for the test on friday he would get hammered this guy would get so plastered every friday morning doing pt he would go we would start our run uh, about halfway through he would have to stop go to the side throw up and get back in line and keep running don't 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 do that so a little funny story a buddy of mine used to ride with me all the time he was kind of my he was my buddy through the academy we've been friends for 10 years now so we go get lunch when we're on our lunch break we come back to the campus after we're done with lunch and there was this guy that was in our group that was extremely annoying he ended up flunking out so we pull into our parking spot we're chatting for a second car is still running well, this guy comes over and he puts his coke is like coca-cola on the hood of my car and i'm like really dude come on so i looked at my buddy i was like hey watch this now keep in mind i was already trying to get out of my car so my car door was open so i put it in reverse i hit the accelerator and his drink tumbles off the front of my car splash everywhere so my initial thought was got you you fucker but before that thought could even cross my mind my door swung open scratched the entire side of a brand new BMW. But luckily the girl that owned it flunked the next week. It's okay, she was a bitch. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you tuning in. I hope everybody is, like I said, having a great week. It was the weekend from hell for me. This this weekend sucked. It started great and then it sucked. So the weekend was going well, I was excited. I had tickets to go see Kevin Hart. I went to Florida, I saw Kevin, and we ended up leaving the show afterward. I get a flat tire, not, 10 miles down the road. Keep in mind, I'm pretty far away from my house. So instead of waiting 90 minutes for AAA, I ended up finding a jack in my car and I just put my little donut on the charger. It looked ridiculous. 45 miles an hour home. When you have semis whizzing past you, you know you're going slow. So I'm frustrated, I get home, I pass out. Very next day I wake up, it's Sunday, go to do a live stream, turn on the computer, blue screen of death. I lost everything. Here's the problem though, I have a backup hard drive that's built into the computer for instances like this. My stupid ass accidentally formatted the backup hard drive as I'm trying to restore my solid state drive and lost everything. So yeah, no bueno man. But either way, I finally got it fixed. I actually had to take the laptop apart and disconnect the backup drive before I could install Windows on the main drive. Another little error, gotta love Microsoft. But as you can see, I'm back up and running again, so I will be doing a live stream soon for you guys. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be tomorrow or Friday, maybe during the day. But either way, sometime within the next week, I will do a live stream for you guys and try to answer some of your questions. I will also be doing a private Patreon live stream. So if you're not a member already, sign up on patreon.com slash officer 401. And I do private live streams for donators. But like I said, guys, thank you so much for joining me. So glad to be back online again. And uh, I will see you guys here very, very soon.